Good morning everyone, isang agamazing na araw sa inyong lahat and welcome sa isa na namang kapanapanabik na episode dito sa ating Science 8 e to Life session on television. This is Tudor C from SDO Torlak Province, your big brother and explorer buddy in this amazing world of science. So kung handa na kayo, buckle up and hold on to your seats because magsisimula na ang ating roller coaster ride in learning science. So let's get it on. So today is for the Science 8 Learners, quarter 2, week 2 na po tayo, and you are with Tutor C. Earthquakes, epicenter, and magnitude po ang ating pag-uusapan. So hopefully, maintindihan natin ang bawat detalye and lesson so that we will be able to apply it sa ating module sa pagsagot and also sa ating totoong buhay yung mga skills na matututunan. Sa module po natin, ito ang ating pinagkuhanan mula sa DepEd Commons, Science Quarter 2, Module 2 for Grade 8. Earthquakes, Epicenter, and Magnitude. So for the quarter two, week two po, ang ating goal for the most essential learning competency ay to differentiate the epicenter of the earthquake from its focus and intensity from magnitude. Ibig sabihin, kikilala na natin sila epicenter, focus, intensity, and magnitude na konektado sa earthquake para mas lalo pa natin silang maunawaan at maintindihan. Reminder nga lang class, okay? Take the pretest prepared at the beginning of the module because hinandayan para ma-assess ang inyong preparedness ng inyong mga teacher para sa bagong lesson. Take time then in reading and understanding the lesson. Follow instructions carefully para hindi kayo magkamali. Use a clean sheet of paper for your answers in each activity and assessment and try to recall and connect the ideas that you had in the lower years or yung mga natutunan na nyo na before at i-apply dito sa ating bagong pag-uusapan or sa topic na inyong bagong pag-aaralan sa inyong school. And of course, be honest, when doing the activities, record only what you have really observed. Okay? Don't hesitate to ask kung meron kayong hindi na uunawaan sa inyong teacher. And then after that, take the post-test prepared at the end of the module para masukat ang inyong natutunan sa inyong pinag-aralan. You can check your answers in the activities, self-assessments, and post-tests to help you pagkatapos ng inyong pinag-aralang module. Simulan natin class sa isang activity under what I know ng inyong module pages. Hanapin ninyo yung may title na multiple choice. Sabi sa ating module, choose the letter of the correct answer. Handa na ba kayo? Number one, ang tanong dito ay, where is the epicenter located in the illustration? Meron tayong picture na merong numbers 1, 2, and 3 and arrows. Saan dito daw ang epicenter? A1, B2, C3, or D2 and 3? The correct answer is letter B, number 2, yung guhit na tumuturo pataas doon sa surface ng earth, kunwari. For number 2 question, what point on Earth's surface is directly above the focus? Is it A, epicenter, B, focus, C, intensity, or D, magnitude? The correct answer class for this one is epicenter. For the number three question, which of the following describes an active fault? Again, which of the following describes an active fault? Is it A, no earthquake occurs, B, no record of earthquake, C, expected to generate earthquake, or D, generates earthquake once in a million years? Para sa sagot, ang tamang sagot ay letter C, expected to generate earthquake. For our number four question, what scale measures the magnitude or size of an earthquake? Ang pagpipilian ay A, Mercalli scale ba? B, Richter scale? C, Spring scale? Or D, Weighing scale? The correct answer for this one class is letter B, Richter scale. And for our number five question, what is referred to as a measure of the amount of energy released in an earthquake? A, Intensity. B, Magnitude. C, stress, D, tension. The correct answer class for this is letter B, magnitude. Very good. 
Ngayon class, punta naman tayo sa ating page na may titulong What's New. Ang activity natin dito ay Label Me. Sabi sa ating direction class, identify and label in the numbers accordingly what are indicated in the figure by choosing the correct word from the box of options provided. Meron tayong illustration na ginamit natin kanina at ito naman ang mga words na pagpipilian natin para sa ating sagot. Intensity, fold, focus, and epicenter. Handa na ba kayo? Meron lamang tayong tatlong sasagutan. Para sa number one class, ang tamang sagot dito ay fold. Para sa number two, epicenter. At para sa number three, focus. Nasagutan nyo ba ng tama? Very good. Meron na kayong natutunan mula sa inyong mga nakaraang pinag-aralan sa lower grade ng science. So pag-usapan na natin ngayon ang ating topic today. Sa nakaraang episode, natutunan nyo na ang earthquake is the shaking of the surface of the earth resulting from the sudden release of energy in the earth's lithosphere or yung namumuong pwersa sa ilalim ng lupa mula sa potential energy na magiging kinetic energy at maglilikha ng lindol sa ibabaw ng lupa. The energy will eventually be released once the fault overcomes the frictional movement. Okay? Ano nga ba yung lithosphere na nabasa natin kanina? Sabi dito class, lithosphere is composed of the cross layer and the upper portion of the mantle. So ito basically yung tinutungtungan natin na lupa, na layer, pati na rin yung layer na nasa ilalim nito na parte ng mantle or yung ibabaw na parte ng mantle. Yun yung lithosphere. Yung fault naman na nabasa natin kanina at tulad na napag-aralan nyo last week, is a weak point in the tectonic or lithospheric plate where the pressure inside the crust is released. Technically, ito yung mahinang parte ng ating crust at mantel. At ito rin yung kadalasang dugtungan ng mga continental plate kung kaya hindi sila matibay tulad ng mga nasa ng parte ng mga plates. Pagtuunan natin ngayon ang mga factors involved or present in an earthquake. So para sa lesson ito, pag-aaralan natin ang focus, epicenter, magnitude at intensity. At maliban doon, sa bandang huli, pag-uusapan din natin ang tungkol sa two types of faults. Meron tayong active faults at inactive faults. Magsimula tayo sa focus at epicenter. Class, papansin ninyo na silang dalawa magkasama. Yun ay dahil sa they both indicate locations. Tumutukay sila ng lokasyon or lugar na parte ng earthquake. Intindihin pa natin ng mabuti. Si focus, it is the area inside the earth where an earthquake starts. It is also known as focal point. So dito nang gagaling kay focus yung pwersa na maglilikha ng lindol at ito ay nasa ilalim ng lupa. Habang si epicenter naman, it is the point on the Earth's surface directly above the focus. So iisipin nyo lamang na nasa ilalim ng lupa si focus at direkta ang katapat niya sa ibabaw ng lupa, yun yung tinatawag na epicenter. Yun ang dahilan kung bakit silang dalawa ay tumutukoy sa lokasyon kapag pinag-uusapan ang earthquake. Tingnan natin ang illustration na to class. Kunwari ito ang Earth's surface. At ito naman kung saan ay merong mahinang parte or nagdugtong na dalawang continental or oceanic plate. Yung pinanggalingan ng earthquake or kung saan nagsimula ang pwersa na naglikha ng lindol sa ilalim ng lupa, yun ang tinatawag na focus. Habang yung katapat niya sa itaas na nasa surface ng earth, yun naman ang tinatawag na epicenter. Malino na ba class kung anong epicenter at focus? Very good. So balik tayo. Pag-usapan natin ng babuti ang epicenter. Sabi dito class, during an earthquake, the strongest shaking occurs at the epicenter. That is because katapat na katapat niya mismo sa ilalim yung pinanggalingan ng lindol. Sometimes, ground breaks along the fault dahil nga mahina yung continental and oceanic plate na katapat ng fault. 
If two earthquakes of equal strength originate from the same epicenter, the one with the shallower focus causes more destruction. Ang ibig sabihin nito, class, is kung may dalawang earthquake down na naganap sa iisang epicenter, kung sino yung mas mababaw ang focus or mas malapit sa surface ng earth, yun ay ang maglilika ng mas malakas na paglindol. Ang dahilan dito ay seismic wave from a deep-focused earthquake lose more of their energy as they travel upward. Ang energy kasi class ay naglalakbay. So kung mas malayo ang kanyang lalakbayin, unti-unting hihina ang pwersang ito. Kung kaya't mas malakas ang lindol, kung mas malapit sa surface ng earth yung pinanggalingan ng pwersa. Mula sa focus and epicenter, punta naman tayo sa magnitude and intensity. Ano nga ba sila at bakit sila ang magkasama? That is because class, they both represent energy with different characteristics. Kung si focus and epicenter kanina ay tungkol sa lokasyon, si magnitude and intensity naman ay tungkol sa enerhiya. Para kay magnitude, measures the energy being released from the focus. So yung enerhiya na nilalabas ng focus kapag siya ay naglikha ng lindol, yun ang tinatawag na magnitude. Ang instrumento na ginagamit para bantayan ang lindol ay tinatawag na seismograph at yung pagsukat naman ng lindol ay tinatawag na Richter magnitude scale or simply Richter scale. Seismograph, instrument that measures earthquake magnitude. Richter scale measures the seismic energy released by the earthquake. Ito ang halimbawa ng seismograph class. Pag sinabing seismograph, ito yung mismong kagamitan or instrumento. Habang yung nakikita yung guhit-guhit na sumusunod sa lindol, ito naman yung tinatawag na Richter scale. Intensity. It is the strength of the trembling made by the earthquake at a place or on the surface. It is also the measurement of the damage on the surface caused by the earthquake. Kung si magnitude ay yung enerhiya or pwersa sa ilalim, si intensity naman ay yung nakikita or mararamdaman sa ibabaw. Mercalli scale measures the intensity of an earthquake or amount of damage caused by it. The intensity varies depending on where you are from the epicenter. So Mercalli scale naman class ang sumusukat ng epekto ng lindol sa ibabaw ng lupa. Ang lakas ng lindol o yung intensity ay dumidepende kung saan ka nakalocate doon sa epicenter. Kung nasa mismong epicenter ka, mas malakas. Kung medyo malayo sa epicenter, medyo mahina ng konti. Balik tayo class sa illustration na ginamit natin kanina para mas madali nating maunawaan ang magnitude at yung intensity. Again, yung lakas ng lindol mula sa focus or yung energy mula sa focus, yun yung tinatawag na magnitude. So nasa ilalim din siya ng lupa tulad ng focus. Habang yung naman nasa earth surface, yun ang tinatawag na intensity or yung lakas ng lindol at kung gaano kagrabe ang damage na nilikha nito. So nasa ibabaw siya ng surface ng Earth. Ang magnitude ay sinusukat ng Richter scale. Ang intensity ay sinusukat ng Mercalli scale. Tandaan niyo yan ha? Richter scale para sa magnitude. Mercalli scale para sa intensity. So mula sa magnitude and intensity, pag-usapan na natin ang dalawang uri ng faults. Meron tayong dalawa which is the active fault. And the other one is inactive fault. Ano ba yung active faults? Active faults are areas along which displacement is expected to occur. Ibig sabihin, ito yung linya na mahina sa ating layer ng earth or sa crust kung saan madalas may nangyayaring lindol. These are considered geographical hazards. Ibig sabihin nito class ay delikado para sa mga tao dahil kapag may nangyaring lindol, may possibility na maguguho ang lupa or bibiyak. Yun ang active faults. Puntahan naman natin ang inactive faults. Siyempre, kung ang active faults ay delikado, ang inactive faults naman ay yung mga faults, o of faults sila, pero hindi ginaganapan ng mga earthquake. Inactive faults are areas which can be identified 
but which do not have occurrence of earthquakes. So yun yung mahihinang layers ng crustal plate ng Earth or dugtungan ng mga continental and oceanic plate, pero walang kaganapan ng earthquake, kaya nga inactive faults siya. Ngayon na napag-usapan na natin ang mga bagay-bagay tungkol sa focus, epicenter, magnitude at intensity, punta naman tayo sa susunod nating activity para sukatin ang ating mga natutunan. Under what's more, ang activity natin ay match it. Ang sabi ng direction, match the definitions under column A with the correct term from under column B. Okay, so column A, nandun ang definition, kukunin natin ang sagot sa ilalim ng column B. Handa na ba kayo? Number one, it is a point on the ground directly above the focus. Number two, it is the weak point in the tectonic plate where pressure which the crust is released. Number three, it is the point where the earthquake originates. Ang pagpipilian ay A fault, B focus, C epicenter, D magnitude. At ang tamang sagot class ay letter C para sa number one, which is epicenter. Letter A para sa number two, which is fault. And letter B para sa number three, which is focus. Nakuha nyo ba ang tamang sagot? Very good. Move na tayo. Para sa susunod nating activity, ang title ay Let's Scale It. Ang sabi ng direction class, grade 8 learners study the table about Richter magnitude and answer the following questions. Alam ko, lilipat ako sa susunod na presentation, pero gamitin ninyo ang inyong kopya ng table na ito. Meron tayong column ng magnitude, description, at yung effect ng earthquake. Base sa magnitude at description. Are you ready? For number one question, what is the lowest magnitude of an earthquake? Base sa table class, ang tamang sagot ay less than 2.0. So yun yung nakikita yung unang number sa ilalim ng column ng magnitude o yung pinakamahina. Number two question, what is the description of magnitude 5.0 to 5.9 earthquake? Ang tamang sagot dito class ay moderate at yun ay nasa ilalim ng description. Very good. Ito naman ang ating pag-aaralan or sasagutan. What I have learned na part ng inyong module. Directions. Fill in the blanks with the correct term to complete the statement class. Sabi ng module natin, write your answers on a separate sheet of paper. Pero kung ang module ninyo ay kopya nyo na at allowed kayong sumagot dito, why not answer directly on your modules? For our number one question, blank is the sudden movement of Earth's crust at a fault line. The correct answer class is, of course, earthquake, which is the sudden movement of the Earth's crust, right? For number two, blank is the point where an earthquake begins. That is focus because it always starts with the focus na nasa ilalim ng lupa. And for our number three, an earthquake's most intense shaking is often felt near the blank. Naalala nyo ba kung saan? Of course, yun ay sa epicenter which is katapat mismo ng focus. For our number four, Blank fault is one that has moved in the past and is expected to move again. So this is a type of fault. That is an active fault. For our number five question, blank fault is a structure that can be identified but which does not have earthquakes. Anong klaseng fault ito? Inactive fault. Very good class. Very good grade eight learners. We now move to the assessment part. Congratulations, you're almost done, class. Multiple choice po tayo on this part of your module. Direction, read each question carefully. Choose the letter of the correct answer. Use a separate sheet of paper for your answers unless allowed kayong sumagot directa sa inyong module. 
Number one, at what point along a fault does the first motion of an earthquake occur? Saan daw sa fault nagsisimula ang earthquake? A, epicenter. B, focus. C, intensity. D, magnitude. The correct answer class, of course, is yung focus na nasa ilalim ng lupa. For number two, where is the epicenter located? Saan daw makikita ang epicenter ng earthquake? A, directly above the focus. B, at the center of the earth. C, located in the seismic waves. Or D, located underground where the earthquake begins. Hmm, saan kaya? The correct answer is, letter A, directly above the focus. Sila di ba yung nagtutukoy ng lokasyon? Si focus sa ilalim, ang katapat niya sa itaas ay si epicenter. Number three, which instrument determines the amount of damage caused by an earthquake? A. Spring scale, B. Richter scale, C. Mercalli scale, or D. Weighing scale. And for this one, the correct answer class is letter C. Mercalli scale. Very good, na alala nyo. Number four. What earthquake magnitude can cause serious damage in areas across several hundred miles? Ito ay nandoon sa Richter magnitude table na ginamit natin kanina. Again, what earthquake magnitude can cause serious damage in areas across several hundred miles? A, 5.0 to 5.9. B, 6.0 to 6.9. C, 7.0 to 7.9. Or D, 8.0 to 8.9. Kung ang sagot nyo class ay, letter D, that is the correct answer. And for our activity today under assessment, the last question, number five, which is measured by a seismograph? Naalala nyo ba kung ano yung seismograph? Ito yung mismong instrumento. Okay? Again, which is measured by a seismograph? Is it A, distance ba? B, force? C, intensity? Or D, magnitude? It is the magnitude, of course. Seismograph is the tool that measures magnitude of the earthquake at yung pagguhit-guhit naman, yun yung tinatawag na Richter scale. And there you go, grade 8 science learner. That's all about it for today's episode. It's about earthquakes, epicenter, and magnitude. I hope deep in my heart nakatulong ito sa inyong pag-aaral. And at the same time, madadala ninyo at magagamit in your everyday lives what you have learned today. Next week ay pag-aaralan naman natin ang earthquake waves with Tutor Marky. Thank you so much at magkita-kita tayong muli next time for another round of Science 8 Adventure. Once again, this is Tutor Z wishing you all the best and laging tatandaan sa agham, kayo ang bida. For the meantime, everyone stay safe. Class dismissed.